at Gail Miller Field in Provo, Utah. The rubber match between OSU and BYU. Here's the first pitch. Misses low for ball one. Home plate umpire today, Carlos Guzman. First base umpire, Brett Higgins. Second base umpire, Brady Sanderson. I saw a little nod from you there, Daly. <laughs> I mean, that looks like a pretty good pitch to me. I guess a little bit low. Maybe. Here's the 1-0. Hard ground ball to short. Fired over to Ava. And Agbayani just makes that look so easy. So one away. And that's the first, that's the first time in the three games this week that BOU's gotten their first the first batter, the leadoff batter that out. That is very true. Yeah, we've seen leadoff walk <laughs> the past two games before this. So maybe BYU finally woke up from that huge night last night. And they gotta be feeling it today. I mean, they're so close to securing a conference series you know, win this weekend, like, that would be huge for them, especially against a ranked team, number six, Oklahoma State. I mean, this is a really big game, the biggest of the weekend, I would say. Tomates mm. behind in the count. Here's the 1-0 pitch. And she towels that one in there for the first strike to Talon Edwards. And we saw Talon Edwards yesterday make a couple fantastic plays defensively. My favorite was the one where she was running in between her, her two teammates yesterday and made yeah, that, that over the shoulder catch. that diving foul ball yeah. catch. Super athletic play. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That one misses high and outside. So, Taylor, we talked about yesterday a lot of these BYU pitchers, young bloods, freshmen, and essentially there, there really is no yellow, uh, those dummy books, you know, how to pitch it as a freshman. <laughs> yeah. You Tellers, wish there was, right? right? She fires that one in for a strike. Two balls, two strikes. But essentially, you just got to get out there. You just got to do it. You just got to yeah. go through the growing pains. And, you know, going up against a ranked team like this, you got to be happy with what the BYU pitching staff has been able to do. Yeah, especially Mata's. Like, I have, can see how much she's grown in just the last couple of weeks of getting to throw against these teams. She this is her second start this weekend, and she just really goes after it. There's a good shot of Coach Gajewski, Kenny Gajewski. Ninth season with the Cowgirls. Highly, highly potent coach. A lot of victories. And Edwards stays alive, fighting off the junk from Mades. And I'll be interested to see how long the leash is for Mades today knowing yeah. that she did pitch on Thursday. Yeah, I think she threw five, six innings-ish. That ball is drilled in the gap, right off the base of the fence. And Edwards gets a double. And that ignites the cowgirl bench. That was hit hard. Yeah, really well hit ball. And and great play on that ball by Jalen Lambert. She knew it was going to hit the fence hard. And knowing her home field, that ball comes off the fence really hard. It's that padded fence. Um, and she played it really well, keeping it at a double where it could have turned into a triple if she overran it. And great hitting by Edwards. And here is the ever dangerous Carly Godwin. And that ball misses low from Mares. And BYU did great yesterday to keep the freshmen inside the park, something that they could not do on Thursday. But we know how dangerous she is. 998 OPS, 337 batting average. And those, uh, those are pretty ridiculous numbers. And we know she has that home run capability too. Um, she was the one that hit the home run in the first inning off of Mata's on Thursday to put OSU up 2-0 to start off that game. And we'll see how Mata's approaches this, knowing that they have that history. So here's the 2-0 pitch. Hard ground ball up the middle. Lambert gets it. 
And she will not be able to get the runner in time. And so Edwards comes all the way around from second to score. And Oklahoma State strikes first. Yeah, very well hit ball right up the center or right up the middle. Jalen Lambert picks it up, really didn't have a chance at home. And Edwards easily scored on that. So something that BYU did not do yesterday is now they're playing from behind. This ball is lifted into right field, going back to the walls. Owens, and she sees that one go by. Caroline Wong delivers a two-run shot. Three, nothing, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State feeling much better with that start than they had yesterday. Their bats were slow to start yesterday and they kind of just built off of it as it went as the game went on, but really coming out firing today. They know how important this series is, series is and to drop a game against a good team, that happens, but they really want to come out and take this one from the Cougars today. Caroline Wong went deep yesterday. Back-to-back -back games with the home run for Wong. Yeah, she's having a weekend. Yeah. And they moved this game up. It was originally supposed to be a noon start, and they moved it back a little bit. Supposedly, according to the forecast, we should be getting some, some rain and some weather. And usually when that, when that comes, it doesn't necessarily mean a ton of jet stream out there. It's just, I don't know what's happened the last game and a half. Eight home runs so far between last yeah, night. Something and is so in far the today. air. As Mata's misses outside. Now this is a very important at bat for Mata's after giving up that home run to try and come right back and really dial it in before things get off the rails. Soft foul ball into the dugout. And Claire Tim taking out her teammates. And it's tough for Mata's too. She saw this lineup, you know, two or three times on Thursday to have to come in and throw against them again when they know her and have seen her. Agbayani fires across for out number two. She's going to really have to throw her best stuff today to get past this Oklahoma State team and their lineup. Got to bring up Michaela Wark. And you look at this lineup overall, and it's it's just like a, a pick your poison. Yeah. Mata's misses high for ball one to Wark. And it was interesting yesterday to see how things kind of Settled into place after the first inning or so. Yesterday it was BYU as Mata's misses for two balls and no strikes. BYU was the one that got things going offensively in the bottom of the first. Now the tables have turned. So we'll see how the Cougars respond. Right now here's the 2-0 from Mata's. Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe pitching with a little bit of a tighter strike zone today. I mean, that's the second pitch this inning that I would have thought would be called the strike. Yeah. You heard Gordon Eakin, the BYU head coach. I can hear him from here. He said, where'd that miss? Here's the 3-0. That one finds the plate. Three balls, one strike. And it's already tough to pitch to these big 12 hitters, Oklahoma State really seasoned lineup. But when the strike zone is tightened, it can make it extremely hard, especially for freshman Mates. And Mates fires right back with an off speed for, for strike two. And we're seeing Maddie Udall and Hunter Ava make their way toward the circle to give their young freshman pitcher encouragement. Here's the payoff pitch. This one lifted into shallow center field. Coming on to make the catch, Jalen Lambert. So, BYU gives up three in the top of the first. 
Hit me. <laughs> yeah, these are incredible numbers. This senior has a .81 ERA. She has a seven to one win to loss record. Wow. Has thrown 43 innings and 44 strikeouts. Oof. I mean, good pitchers throw about the same, you know, innings as strikeouts, you know, one inning or one strikeout an inning, but to have more strikeouts than innings pitched, it's just a pretty incredible statistic. It's gonna be a, t a tall order for the BYU offense today. And you can see she's bringing the heat as well. Two pitches, two strikes. And Alana Ogbayani in the hole. Here's the 0-2. And she misses outside. And you can see a difference in velocity from the pitchers Oklahoma State threw out last night to Ivy Rosenberry today. Here's the one-two. And this one comes inside and nicks Akbayani. So BYU, they'll take a free pass. Akbayani try to rub that one out. Looks like there's a her left forearm. Yeah. Uh, initially, I thought it hit her in the knee because she went down on the ground. Ooh. But yeah, it got her right in the arm. And you know it hurts, but they're trying not to show that it hurts. So she's going to hustle down to one. You'll take base runners any time, though, if you're BYU, even though it stinks to get hit. So Maddie Bejarano, first pitch that she saw was a ball. Here's the 1-0. And trying to paint that outside and missing was Rosenberry. So two balls and no strikes. Bejarano last night had an electrifying double down the left field line. She made a really good defensive play and was able to keep some runners at bay with her arm. Here's the 2-0. And this one comes inside for ball three. You know, Oklahoma State pitching got themselves a little bit in trouble yesterday. Um, couple hit by pitches, couple walks, which loaded up those bases and allowed BYU to have those grand slam opportunities that they took advantage of. Um, we're, it's really not common for Ivy Rosenberry up until this inning has only walked 13 people wow. in 43 innings of work. That's really uncommon for her. I'm wondering if it's a little bit to do with the strike zone that we talked about on the top of the first inning. Um, behind the plate umpire, Guzman just seems to have tightened up that strike zone today. It's going to be tough for those pitchers to throw to. So a hit by pitch and a walk. Give BYU two on base. And showing bunt was Lily Owens. She couldn't pull it back. And she sees a strike come across from Rosenberry. Lily Owens, the sophomore. And this one comes too far inside. Count is even at 1-1. Lily Owens had a really great day yesterday. Three for four at the plate. She was a big part of BYU's offense yesterday, too. And this one misses high. So I'm wondering what Coach Eakin's strategy is right now, Taylor, if, if he's telling them to take until they at least get a strike, and then it's up to their judgment. But already, with no outs midway through this BYU lineup, Oklahoma State's going out to the circle. Yeah, definitely, if you're BYU, I'd watch until you at least get one strike. I mean, a hit by pitch and a batter walked, it's way more strategic to do something like that, especially in a big game like this. And BYU's chasing runs right now. You know, they'll take a walk and those freebies if Oklahoma State is going to give them up. Just good look at Coach Eakin. Do you recognize him without his old mustache? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he had the mustache while I was here. No? What was it like playing under Coach? Oh, Coach was awesome. Seriously, one of the nicest people um, and super passionate about softball. You could always tell that about him. He was a really great coach and has done a lot of good things for BYU. Super cool for him that he gets to now coach in the Big 12. Both of these coaches doing a fantastic job at their programs, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that later. Here's the 2-2, two -two. and this one misses inside. Now the count is full to Owens. The 
Runners will be going on contact. Here's the payoff pitch. And this one fouled off the screen. I think one of my favorite Coach Eakin memories at a practice the day before tournament. I think we were in Tennessee. I could be wrong though. He wanted to take some BP at the end of the practice. <laughs> Hits the ball out. No you way. Know, dramatic around the bases, dancing. It was pretty awesome. He still got it, you know. Lily Owens, soft line drive over to short. Rosie Davis with the catch. And the runners smartly make their way back. They always say, what, freeze on a line drive, right? Yep. And BYU with Agbayani and Bejarano doing a good job not to get doubled up. And this will bring up Hunter Ava. You talked about Coach hitting one out. The Hunter Ava yesterday had that massive grand slam in the first. There's another replay and Rosie Davis' catch. And Hunter Ava sees her first strike of the at-bat. And I would say Hunter Ava is argu arguably one of the most experienced with top 25 talent um, going against top 25 talent on BYU squad right now. She's really played since her freshman year and been a huge part of their lineup. She always hits consistently, which is awesome for her. Like, a lot of hitters go into slumps, and she really just doesn't. That batting average almost always is above 300. Mm. Here's the 0-2. And Ava, line drive right back at Rosenberry. My goodness. That ball was smoked. Wow. Self-defense almost for Rosenberry. Yeah, talk about reaction time. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Let's go, brothers! Man. Great for Oklahoma State. Sad for BYU. That had easily scored Ogbayani from second base and moved Bejarano over into scoring position. The reflexes from Rosenberry. You have to figure if that ball was maybe an inch or two, any other direction, that would have been a base hit. Yeah. And super glad to see Rosenberry wearing a face mask. Oh, yeah. It's kind of getting more and more common for girls to do that. And I think it should be required. I mean, the, gr the girls at this level hit the ball so hard. I mean, I, I just don't think it's worth it. Here's the 2-0 pitch. That one misses outside. Three balls and no strikes to Maddie Udall. In my glorious rec league softball days, <laughs> I didn't have a mask, and I had a comebacker just like that, and it broke my hand. Really? Oh, yeah. It is dangerous out there. And these girls hit the ball way harder than I do. That one paints the corner, three balls and one strike. BYU fans not happy about that pitch. <laughs> the Boo Birds are out in full force early today. Rosenberry's 3-1. And this one lifted off the screen again. Foul. Now the count is full. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the first. BYU with two on. And they trail by three. Here's the payoff pitch. Another foul. And Matty Udall stays alive. This is a really important at-bat for BYU. I mean, Oklahoma State gave them two runners on base with a hit-by-pitch and a walk they really need to use and capitalize their hitting. I mean, they now have two outs, and may, Rosenberry may get out of this inning without any, any, any runs scored. And this ball slapped down the line, foul. Almost takes out our main man, Aaron, our camera guy. Still photographer with a bucket hat. And the difference in games like this sometimes is who capitalizes when runners are on base. Oklahoma State did that in the first inning. And it's is BYU going to do that in this bottom of the first inning? And Udall again just working up there. And these at bats are are beneficial not just for the for the batter because they're able to see so many pitches, but it's also beneficial for your teammates too. Yeah. Especially those in the on deck circle. They're able to see the different styles, the different maybe quirks or something that the pitcher has. Either way, here's the payoff pitch. Another foul ball. And a lot of the times, the longer the at-bat, 
the more likely the hitter is to get a hit off of the at bat. They've just seen the pitch come out of the pitcher's hand over and over again, and it makes it easier for them to time it up and get a hit. Come on, Maddie, you got it. We haven't seen very many off-speed pitches here from Rosenberry. Wonder if she will. And this one blasted to second. Rosie Davis with a snag. And the 4-3 put out puts an end to BYU's efforts in the season in the Big 12 for BYU. And they trail 3-0 to the Cowgirls. And Mares gets this at bat. Started with the strike to Scotland David. And if BYU takes this series this weekend, I mean, what's that going to do to the standings, right? Very true. Here's the 0-1. There's a bunt lifted in the air. Unbelievable catch. Oh, Andy Morrow. Take a bow. Wow. Yeah, honestly, I thought Udall was going to come up and make that catch. But Haley Morrow up out of her catcher position. Diving catch. Haley Morrow, get you some. And look at this reaction. Yeah. She's fired herself up. <laughs> and you know, that's possible. Haley Morrow was a middle infielder coming to BYU, and BYU was hurting for some catching last year, and so she stepped into that position. She's just all sorts of athletic to be able to do that, so I'm really not surprised to see such a great athletic play by her. Here's the 1-0. And this one misses low and in the dirt, ball one. And we, we talked about Lily Owens yesterday. Thursday she was at third base. Now she's in, in right field, and she made some crazy catches yesterday. And uh, just, again, pick your poison athletically, top to bottom defensively for this BYU team. Megan Bloodworth, she had one of the home runs yesterday for Oklahoma State. She lifts this one into left field, a line drive shot right at Bejarano. So two away very quickly here in the top of the second. You know, it's only fair for after, you know, last inning, BYU a couple of really great hits that goes right to Oklahoma State players. I mean, that was a great swing by Bloodworth and right to Bejarano and left, and that's just part of the game. Showing bunt was Anderson. She pulled that one back. Anderson yesterday made her first collegiate start, and in her first collegiate start, she got her first collegiate home run. Yeah, I mean, you literally can't have it better than that. Yeah. Here's the slap hit right up the middle. And BYU tried to play her in, and she took what the defense gave her and gave it right back to him. So that'll bring up Rosie Davis, whose glove robbed BYU of a potential hit in RBI in the bottom of the first. And Rosie Davis yesterday as well, one of the four who hit the home run for Oklahoma State. Off-speed pitch from Mades. That one in there for strike one. For Taylor Anderson being her, her first collegiate start yesterday, she has come into the game in base run, probably as a pinch runner a couple times. She's four for four on the base path right now. Wouldn't be surprised to see a steal attempt from her, if not now, but some point in this game. I've seen Haley Morrow take a glance down at first after every pitch. Here's the one, one. And there she goes, the rabbit is loose. Throw is in time. Haley Morrow gets her out. Taylor Anderson gets caught stealing, and that'll do it for the Cowgirls. It's a place from Haley Morrow last inning. And the BYU defense keeping things at bay for the moment. And the first pitch from Rosenberry misses for ball one to Kayla Kamoku. Here's the 1-0. Big swing and a miss from Komoku. Now correct me if I'm wrong, Daly, but when you got a pitcher that's throwing as, as hot as 
as Rosenberry is, you don't have to necessarily supply the power with the swing. You just got to yeah. put the bat on the ball. Absolutely. It's better to be shorter to the ball against a pitcher like this, especially with the kind of movement that she has. So Rosenberry misses. Two balls and one strike to the junior, Kayla Komoku. Here's the 2-1. Another big cut fouled straight back. Two balls and two strikes. Coach Eakin with the, with the drip, as the young kids say. All royal blue. OSU. The drip. The I haven't drip. heard that. <laughs> this one fouled out of play. At least that's what Urban Dictionary tells me. <laughs> I have to check it every, like, two weeks to try and make sure I'm not losing any slang. That's impressive. Speaking of staying hip, Cosmo, the hippest mascot in the country, in my opinion. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And this one lifted foul again out of play. Yeah, the Cosmo dances with the Cougarettes. Yep. I mean, if I scroll by one of those, I have to stop and watch it. <laughs> just have to. Yep. It's so funny, when, when we got into the Big 12, as a whole, BYU got more requests about Cosmo than anything. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. This one nubbed foul. Everybody was so stoked to have Cosmo come to a game for them. <laughs> no way. Oh, dead serious. Home plate umpire Carlos Guzman. Going to hand Rosenberry a ball, making sure it's not scuffed up. And yeah, he didn't like he, that one. He gives it back to her, <laughs> then says, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and throws it out. Yeah, my bad. On second thought, I don't like that ball. <laughs> hey, nothing but the best. Yep. All right, here's the 2-2. Two -two. Ooh, this one misses high. So Komoku working the count full. Doing a good job holding off at that pitch. I mean, it looked just like the one she swung and missed at earlier in her at bat, being smarter and choosing not to swing at that. So here's the payoff pitch. And this one misses high and outside. Another leadoff walk in back-to-back -back innings for BYU. And that'll bring up the defensive specialist, Haley Morrow. It's crazy to see so many walks and freebies from this Oklahoma State pitching staff who really doesn't do a lot of that. Oh, right on cue. Haley Morrow takes one inside. And that puts her down on the knees. And she's going to get up slowly. And on a cold day like this, those ones sting. Yeah. And Morrow jogs down to first, and she's going to... Take an extra couple steps. Ooh, right off the left, the right knee. Yeah, that hurts, especially your catcher. Ooh. She's got to sit in a squat the rest of the game. Seems to be okay, though. So here we are again, no outs, runners on first and second. PYU has another chance to go and get back some of those runs. That brings up now Lindsay Madrigal. from Price, the junior. And she sees the first offering on the outside corner for strike one. Yeah, we haven't seen her in the lineup yet this series. This is a new new batter, you know, in this series. She shows bunt, gets it right to Rosenberry. She does her job and gets the runners over. Kamoku to third and Morrow to second. With only one away, BYU in prime time scoring position. Yeah, gotta make Coach Eakin happen. We've seen happy the we've seen the bunt attempt several times throughout the series. BYU hasn't really got one down yet. And for Madrigal to come off the bench and you know execute that is super important for BYU in this situation. Here's the OO. And this one lifted into the BYU dugout. Jalen Lambert, the junior from Temecula, California. She has three RBIs on the season, has an opportunity to make it five. 
if not at least four. This one misses on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. And BYU has done a good job so far through the first inning and a third of making Rosenberry work. Two balls and one strike. That's Rosenberry's 43rd pitch. If this were the major leagues right now, you'd be having some executives hitting their panic button because you don't see starters go more than 50, 60 pitches these days. Yes, yeah, such a different world between softball and baseball with pitch counts and how much they're able to throw. There's no restriction on softball players and how much they're able to throw besides what their bodies will let them handle. Sure. Let's go, Jalen. So Jalen Lambert with that foul ball brings the count even to two and two. And you can see Lambert all the way back as far as she can in the batter's box, trying to see the ball for as long as she can. Here's the 2-2. And she runs up and slaps this one to short. And she gets the sacrifice in the books. BYU is on the board. And Kamoku will come home. Three to one. And that's what makes that bunt from Madrigal so important in situations like this, moving those runners over. I mean, if that hadn't have happened, no runs would have come across for BYU in that last play. Possibly double play, too. Yeah, exactly. Here's Agbayani in the top of the order. Agbayani, a hard ground ball to short, gobbled up by Bloodworth, and BYU is retired, but not before they get a run across. Like, it, I was amazed when I was at BYU how many athletes' names he knew. I mean, there's so many athletes, and it's constantly changing, and he really took the time to get to know people's names. He's a really cool guy. That's awesome. Rosie Davis. 0 for 1, looking for her first hit of the day. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Nice off speed. Finds a strike zone. One ball and one strike for Mades. Here's the 1-1. Another off speed. This one misses low, according to Carlos Guzman. Yeah, seems to be a little tight on that outside corner today. Here's the 2-1 pitch. And that one again low, according to Carlos Guzman. So three balls, one strike to Rosie Davis. Here's the offering. And this one misses high. So Mades walks the leadoff batter to start the third inning. And that'll bring up Edwards. Edwards had a really nice hit in that first inning, mm. driven in that right center field gap. And now with a runner in scoring position, this is a big out for Mates. And that one finds the strike zone. That looked like it was a little high and outside, but yeah. Carlos Guzman called that one a strike. And now you're starting to hear it from both sides of the fan bases out there. Yeah, the biggest thing that these teams can ask for is just that it's consistent. And it's still early in the game, but as long as we see that consistently throughout the game. This one in the dirt. And Morrow doing a good job with a kick save to keep it in front of her. Sees Davis go down to second. And so now even more dangerous scoring position for Oklahoma State. And the wind starting to swirl. The flag's out in the outfield, blowing from left to right, meaning it's coming in from the south. A little bit in as well. Here's Mata's pitch. This one, check swing foul. One ball and two strikes to Talon Edwards. Good shout out to our camera ops, Jude, Maya, Darby, and Becca. Our producer, Nate Thatcher. Associate producer, Alta Mitchell. Director, Aiden Perry today. And this one in the dirt. And now we got the runner all the way at third. Mata's 
going to take her time getting back to the rubber. Yeah, really tough to have two balls that <laughs> advance the runner from first to third. It's just like giving up bases. Hard ground ball to second. Komoko keeps it in front of her, gets the out, but the run comes across in Rosie Davis, making it 4-1 to one, Oklahoma State. And those freebies hurt so much. You know, a leadoff walk, advance to second on a pass ball, advance to third on a pass ball. It just makes a little base hit like that a scorable play. And Oklahoma State goes up now 4-1. to one. It's now with one away. That'll bring up Carly Godwin. And Carly Godwin lifts this one high and out of play. Another long strike. And after yesterday's performance, you can just tell she's chomping at the bit to get another hit. Single and an RBI in the first. Here's the 01. This one lifted down the line and curling. Foul just barely hits the top of the fence on the other side of the pole. That would have been a home run. About five, six feet to the left. But Matas will take a deep breath and look up at the scoreboard, just a long strike. Let's see what Morrow and Matas have up in store. Trying to work it low, skipping it in there for one ball and two strikes. Here's the one, two. And this one poked into left field. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Bejerano with that cannon gets it in. A one hopper to second, but a stand up double for Godwin, keeping the rally going for the Cowgirls. And she did a really good job of sitting on that changeup. It was an off speed pitch, and she kept her weight back and was able to just poke it to that left field side. And Bejarano got it in quick. I mean, there was no slide at second, but it was almost close enough that there should have been. Bejarano, the last couple of days, very impressive with her arm strength. And this one misses. And you can kind of see from the body language of Mata's a little bit of frustration yeah. starting to show. Yeah, it's hard. She's working for those corners. She's not getting them. So she has to bring it over the plate a little bit more. And then Oklahoma State's hitting it. It's just hard, hard task. Haley Morrow comes up, threatening to fire down to second. Instead, she's going to walk it out to the freshman pitcher, have a talk with her. And Caroline Wong, who had a home run yesterday and a home run today, a two-run blast in the first. Part of that three-run first inning for the Cowgirls. So you know that she can swing it. And Haley Morrow just trying to calm her pitcher down. Here's the 2-0. And this one lifted high down the line. And tailing. Lily Owens makes the catch in foul territory, but tagging on the play is Godwin. Two away. And Lily Owens again showing that athleticism. <laughs> Something going on on the field. Umpire was pointing over to third base. Not quite sure what that was about. There's a good angle with the wind blowing. You see Owens on her horse, almost in the bullpen for Oklahoma State. Turns and fires and gets it in. And you know, in some situations, like seventh inning, two to one ball game, sometimes you let that ball go. This one lifted right out Owen, so BYU escapes, only giving up one run. Four to one, Oklahoma State whips. And then seeing Oklahoma State continue their dominance as well. First pitch swinging, ground ball out to Godwin. And Bejarano is retired. I had the privilege of being a part of a, a small film crew to go around to all the Big 12 schools and to tell some stories about them. And it was really cool to talk with some of the fans in the stands and to hear from the little girls in the, st in the state of Oklahoma 
as that ball is fired in there for a strike. And they, you know, growing up in the 90s, a lot of girls grew up because of the 99ers and soccer in 2000s, wanted to play soccer. But now you have this huge contingency of girls growing up who want to play softball. And uh, Coach Gordon Eakin is trying to do that same thing for the girls here in Utah. And both the coaching staffs in Oklahoma are doing a fantastic job of, of making softball a premier sport, which is really cool to see. Yeah, and as a girl from the state of Utah, I remember coming up here and watching games. And that was my dream to come play here. Just so cool to be able to come and watch and then one day get to step on that field and play. It's awesome. Two balls and one strike to Lily Owens. And she watches that one go high for three balls and one strike from Izzy Rosenberry. Here's the 3-1. And Owens grounds this one to third. Talon Edwards comes up, fires. Pulls Carly Godwin off the base, but she's able to keep her foot on the bag. And BYU quickly goes 1-2. That'll bring up the deadly Hunter Ava, who nearly took out Ivy Rosenberry in her first at-bat with a line drive right at her. And Ava lifts this one high in the air and out of play into the stands. Almost takes out a couple fans. Yeah, BYU really looking for a two-out rally this inning. And we know that anything can happen. Last night, BYU had an 8-2 lead, and the final score was 11-8. Ava again lifting this one foul and out of play. And so when you really look at it, three runs, it's not insurmountable, but BYU's got to get some runners on base in order to do that. And then execute when they do, right? True. Here's the 0-2 to Ava. Ava lanes one foul down the line, and she stays alive. Rosenberry gathers herself in the circle, winds and fires. Ava, hard ground ball, Talon Edwards again. Scoops it up, fires across, and BYU is retired one, two, three in the bottom of the third. In the circle, going to work against Michaela Wark. She fires in there for strike one. And I don't like to throw out these cliches, Taylor, but you almost get the sense that this is kind of like a make or break pivotal inning for BYU and for Gianna Marez. Yeah, they've really only held Oklahoma State scoreless just that second inning. A couple more zeros on the board would be really helpful as their offense tries to come alive and make something happen, happen off of Rosenberry. Here's the 1 1 pitch from Marez. And off speed. Finds the strike zone for strike number two. Cosmo trying to encourage the dugout. The one, two. And she gets a swing and a miss. Throw down by Morrow. And that's the first recorded strikeout for either team today. Yeah. And really great of Morrow to hold on to that ball. It's so hard when the ball bounces in the dirt, especially on that third strike where the runner can still run down to first and make it safely and have it not be recorded as a strikeout. But like you said, really interesting. That's the first strikeout we talked about earlier. Ivy Rosenberry has such a great strikeout record. I mean, generally striking out at least one person an inning and in three innings hasn't striked out one, struck out one Cougar. BYU has done a really good job just putting the bat on the ball. Scotland David now in the circle, or excuse me, in the batter's box, showing bunt. Corners are crashing. And Madez misses low for ball one. I beg your pardon, ball two.
Here's the 2-0. And the punt is laid down foul. Two balls and a strike. How many times did you bunt in your career? Sacrifice bunt or for a hit? Either way. I sacrifice bunted a lot of times, I would say, you know. Um, for a hit, not as often. But I had a little speed, so sometimes, you know, <laughs> I could get one down and get away with it. Two balls and a strike. And this one misses low for ball three. I mean, it's hard enough to square around and bunt but a lot of these players, they try to square around, bunt, and then also get like a one or two step advantage down the line. Yeah, especially these lefties that just have so much speed. There's a hard ground ball chopped foul over the head of Ava. The count is full, three balls and two strikes. And you'll see the BYU corners retreating back a little bit more towards their bases. With the two strike count, it's not very often we see these hitters attempt bunt. We actually did see that yesterday. I, did. I believe it was Taylor Anderson that bunt attempted with two strikes, it went foul, and she ultimately was called out. Yeah, yesterday we saw a couple of weird things that we don't see too often. Uh, Godwin left first base early. Yeah. And Coach Eakin made the Wait, challenge. And she wasn't even stealing. It was yeah. just the leadoff. BYU challenges it and gets <laughs> gets the call and ends the inning. That was a really big point in yesterday's game that you're right. We just don't see that. Payoff pitch. Low and in the dirt for ball four. And that is the third walk issued on the afternoon. And that'll bring up Bloodworth. My reference yesterday, just a terrifying name. And she made that point known with her home run yesterday, and now she gets plunked. Oh, no, they're going to say it was a foul ball. She didn't really seem affected by it, so it no. must have hit the, you know, just that handle of her bat really close to her hands. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, or even the knob yep. of the bat, it looks like. Our replay studs, Timmy and Jason, thank you for that. And change up, fires in there for strike number two. And now Mata's is in that position with this 0-2 count to, you know, really work her pitches, try and hit some corners and get Bloodworth on her toes. You can see Mades trying to keep it low, possibly trying to force a ground ball to get a double play and get out of the inning. And this one skips off of Morrow's glove, and David will go down to second, and that'll take away the potential double play. Mata's has had a little bit trouble. I don't know if she's throwing an off speed or if it's a drop ball, but just has thrown a lot of balls in the dirt today, which we've seen that just helps those Oklahoma State runners be able to move around the bases. It's a ground ball to Agbayani. Looks the runner back, throws, barely. Gets Bloodworth at first. Good stretch by Hunter Ava, but Bloodworth showing off the speed. Two away here in the top of the fourth. And Agbayani does do a little quick check at that second base, trying to hold her there and still is able to get that out. That was a really close play, though. Taylor Anderson shows bunt, pulls it back, then lays it down again. But it takes a deflection off of her leg. And that'll be a foul ball. And Taylor Anderson, first career start yesterday, second career start today. Here's the 0 1. Anderson watches that one go high and outside for ball one. It 
makes a player like her hard to defend, too. I mean, we know she can hit a long ball, and she also has the speed and bunting capabilities. Ramadas trying to paint the inside corner and misses. Two balls and a strike. Here's the 2 1. Low and in the dirt for ball three. And Rosie Davis in the top of the order on deck. It's not like they're trying to pitch around Taylor Anderson to get to Davis. Here's the 3 1. And that one misses low for ball four. So that will be. A great opportunity for Rosie Davis now. And that's going to be it for Gianna Mates. It's Jude, Maya, Darby, Becca, replay specialists Timmy and Jason, Audio, Maddie, and Garrett, and our timeout coordinator, Sienna. Throw down to second. Not in time. So Kate Daly inherits two runners on. Here's the 1-0. Breaking ball misses, two balls, no strikes. Here's the 2-0 pitch. A rise ball, misses high, three balls, no strikes to Rosie Davis with the dangerous lefty Talon Edwards on deck. Three zero, and that one misses high, not even close. Four straight pitches, four straight balls, and the bases are loaded, full of cowgirls. Stable is full. The few times that we've had bases loaded, I mean, yesterday it was for BYU, both times, <laughs> and they had that grand slam ball. I mean, just one pitch can completely change the game. I mean, that would make it eight to one rather than four to one. Not that that's something that generally happens in a bases loaded situation, but just crazy, you know, that it happened twice in a game yesterday. I was speaking with uh, BYU SID Cameron Ma earlier today, and he said that the last time BYU had two grand slams in a game was earlier this year versus Cal Poly in Palm Springs. And he said that uh, Lily Owens and Hunter Ava were the two that did it. And ironically enough, Hunter Ava had that first Grand Slam for BYU last night. But uh, shout out to Cameron Ma for helping us with that info. But like you said, Talon Edwards, we know what she can do with the stick. Already she has an RBI registered to her name and a line drive double. One for two. Here's the 1 And this one misses high and outside. One ball and one strike. Kate Daly bringing it, though. She's popping the glove. And that makes her change up and off speed even more deadly when it's accurate. Yes. Here's the 1 1. Line drive, just barely foul for strike number two. Again, two outs, top of the fourth. 4 1, Oklahoma State on top of BYU. Kate Daly coming into relief. Here's the one, two. And this one, another line drive down the line and foul. And you see that Edwards was ahead of that changeup. Yeah. But sat on it well. I mean, she still hit a hard line drive, just barely ahead of that pitch. It'll be interesting to see where the pitch calling goes, you know, from here on out with Edwards up to bat and showing that she can sit on that changeup. Do, do you show it again? Here's the pitch. 
Change up, check swing. No go, says third base umpire Brady Sanderson. She wanted it though, almost down to her knees, <laughs> trying to hold back her swing. Interesting pitch, you called it. And we'll see if she elects to go back to the changeup or tries to sneak in a fastball. Here's a 2 2. And this ball is ripped in the gap. That one's going to do some damage. Lambert gets it in. A base is clearing. Three RBI double. Tacks on three more for the Cowgirls for Talon Edwards. That is Edwards' spot today. I mean, two hits now in that gap for doubles. A rise ball, and Talon Edwards was all over it. And honestly, not a terrible spot by Kate. Just Edwards took her hands up to that and got all of it. David Anderson and Davis all come around to score, making it 7-1 to now Oklahoma State. And Godwin up at the dish. Again, there's still two outs. So two of those runs will go to Mades, one of them to Daly. And Godwin aggressively swings and fouls it off for strike one. And BYU still with four chances at the plate, but digging themselves in a deeper and deeper hole. We're going to have to see some hitting like we saw last night um, to make this a close ball game again. Daly missing low. Another pitcher. We didn't even bring this up but uh, another pitcher trying to get used to a different strike zone. So two for two today, Carly Gondwin. And she's looking to make it three for three. And Daly misses high and outside for ball two. And another dynamic of this game today is BYU is a little short-handed on arms um, with injuries and such. Oklahoma State got to see Mades again, and now Daly again, whereas BYU is Great facing point. a whole new pitcher. Fantastic. Ivy point. Rosenbeck hasn't even thrown yet this weekend. And also has um, Acock behind her that threw Thursday's game and handled the Cougars. If she does get into trouble, it just makes it really difficult for the Cougars. That's why we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> Great analysis. Here's the 3-1, and Godwin fouls this one to make it a full count. But going along with that, too, I think that's something that BYU is going to struggle with throughout the rest of their season, right? A lot of these Big 12 schools have a deep pitching staff, and I mean, unless people are injured, they have a lot more people that they can bring out of the bullpen than BYU does. So really, I think throughout the rest of their conference season, BYU is just going to have to hit the crap out of the ball. Hmm. You know, really try and put up as many runs as they can against these teams. Easier said than done, but I mean, last night they made it look easy. And so you just got to figure, I wonder what, what was going on, what the mojo was in that dugout and try and capture that. Here's the payoff pitch, Godwin. A hopper to third, Udall fires. And gets her out. Great recovery from Maddie Udall. And BYU finally stops the bleeding in the fourth, but not before Oklahoma. Right there. Like a <laughs> mini, what is this called? Oh, the, the little Saturday Night Fever, the disco move. The disco, yeah. Just a little mini one of those. Just have a little bit of fun. Pointing the arrows. Our EBS operator, Timmy Bates, uh, he's a disco guy. I patent my mustache off of him. Shout out to Timmy in the dark room, rolling back our, our replay tapes. And Ivy Rosenberry with the 1-1 count to Maddie Udall, leading things off for the Cougars in the bottom of the first. Excuse me, bottom of the fourth. And she slaps this one down the right field line, just barely foul. Hey, Maddie, you got it. Just like that, let's go. If you look at this BYU batting order, a lot of offers up there, a lot of zeros. But BYU was able to get one run across in the bottom of the second. Come on, Maddie. And Udall fouls this one off the net. 
Hey, you're on that. You know it. You're on it. So, Taylor, when you are facing a deficit like 7-1, how is it? How hard is it to really just try and relax and to, to just have fun and, and play softball? Yeah, it can be a lot of pressure, especially in big games like this. Hard ground ball to short. Bloodworth fires over to Godwin for the out. But you know that, you know, one swing isn't going to be the difference. It's just one batter at a time. And just playing as if it's the beginning of the game as well. I mean, there's still four innings um, that BYU has to work with. So just tacking on a couple runs every inning rather than trying to make up that six-run deficit that they're at right now. Right now in the bottom of the fourth, if they can just put a couple up every inning, it's very possible for them to come back. Kamoku watches the strike go by. Kamoku walked in the second. And Kamoku fouls this one back. And quickly the count is 0-2. And for BYU, this game really not like bad approaches at the plate either. Like they've hit a lot of balls hard that just happen to go to the Oklahoma State defense right at them. And they're hitting the ball hard on the ground. It's not like they're popping up. It's not a lot of wimpy hit balls either. It just really hasn't gone their way. There's a not a wimpy hit. A nice one hopper into right field for a base hit for Kayla Kamoku. And is this the, the possible spark that ignites the rally flame for BYU? And Haley Morrow, she's not, uh, excuse me, Kamoku not trying to do too much with it. Pitch yeah. is outside, she went with it. Yeah, very well hit ball, good approach by her. Haley Morrow, the catcher, first pitch swinging. And it's interesting to note that we've seen the lineup for Oklahoma State come through two, three times already. And for a lot of these girls for BYU, now this is just their second plate appearance. Yeah. And so getting adjusted, getting maybe used to, seeing what Rosenberry has to offer. Yeah, and that really makes a difference. That offering from Rosenberry misses inside. One ball, one strike. BYU's approach, you know, impressive too. Like no strikeouts against a strikeout pitcher so far in the game and drawing walks. Hard ground ball to third, Edwards over to second. And they get the lead runner in Komoku and the second out. I think a really big part of what Rosenberry is doing is she's throwing that hard drop ball and just getting these BYU's hitters to hit ground balls. And she has a really great defense behind her that's backing her up and able to make plays. Coach Gajewski going out to Brady Sanderson at second, possibly trying get to get out of the way. So in that situation, what do you need to do? Either slide or just peel off and get out of yeah, the way? Yeah, one or the other. And I can see why she didn't slide, because she was still maybe you know, one or two steps away from the base, but she is supposed to get out of the way. But you know, it is strategic on the other hand, if she can get away with not going down and being a little bit in the way of the throw, that's a, that's a hard call to make as an umpire. Lindsey Madrigal with the 2-0 count, fouls this one down the line for strike number one. In a situation kind of like that once, I think we were playing at St. Mary's Second baseman comes up and throws and hits our player right in the face. Oh. Yeah. Brutal. Olivia Sanchez. Oh, man. Yeah. This ball lifted deep down the left field line. Coming over to make the catch in foul territory is Taylor Anderson. And BYU is retired. And Kate Daly in the circle today. Back-to-back -back nights of action for her. And first pitch that she throws to Caroline Wong is a strike. Kate Daly gets a check swing foul from Wong.
Wong's big home run in the first inning helped Oklahoma State get those three runs and really snake bite the Cougars in that first inning. And Kate Daly misses on the outside for ball number one. This is an important inning for BYU to get past. I mean, top of the fifth, and Oklahoma State is just, you know, two runs away from that run rule. BYU really has to protect themselves, not only in hitting and defense. Woo, Agbayani showing off the leather. A slow ground ball from Wong. Agbayani coming up and making that look easy. And that's the thing, showing off the leather, right? It doesn't even look like she's showing off. It just looks so easy and natural for her, which makes sense, you know, with the parents that she has. Yep. We'll dive into that. Her dad, Benny Agbayani, played in the majors for several years. And Kate Daly seems to kind of be settling in after... Inheriting some runners on base. And the base is loaded. Yeah, that's never easy. No. In that last inning, and here she is already on top of the count, 0-1 to Caroline Wong. Misses in the dirt, one ball, one strike. Here's the 1-1. One, one. And this ball lifted into right field. And BYU will hold Wong at first. Tim, excuse me, beg your pardon. And Tim is, is dabbing. I haven't seen the dab in a while. She's dabbing to her teammates <laughs> over there at first base. It's always fun to see the little things that the teams do to celebrate their hits. But Lily Owens actually did a really great job on that ball, keeping it in front of her and keeping that from that single from turning into a double. Mm. Now Wark, see strike one go by. Michaela Wark flew out to center in the first and struck out in the fourth. Already with one out, Daly would love a ground ball double play to end this inning. Fires in there for strike number two. Kate doing a really good job today of getting ahead in the count. Besides that first walk when she came in last inning, she has really done a good job of throwing strikes and working, you know, one, two counts, oh, two counts in her favor. Here's the oh, two. Oh, they're going to say that that grazed Michaela Wark's arm. And what a heartbreaker for Kate Daly, being ahead of the count 0-2 and then yeah. giving up a free base. And it's crazy when that happens and the catcher still catches the ball. Yeah. That it can hit the player, you know, just so slightly. Mm. And it's so hard to tell, but if it did, it was barely, right? Yeah. Again, Mara, Mara looked surprised she on did. that, like turning to... Guzman at home plate, like, are, are you sure? <laughs> yep, so Guzman, Higgins, and Sanderson, they're going to go take a look. The headsets are off, and the call is confirmed that the ball did indeed hit Michaela Wark. And I think they might be bringing in a pinch runner. Yeah. And so it looks like coming in to run for Michaela Wark is Hayden Sokolowski, number 21, the sophomore. And we're having a pitching change as well for BYU. Looks like they're bringing in Chloe Temples. So Kate Daly's day is done, and Chloe Temples will come on. And we saw her yesterday. She started the afternoon for BYU. Mariana Florida, the senior. Again, Coach Eakin with the lefty and Temples throwing anything out there, really, to try and see if they can find some sort of solution to stump 
Yeah. Oklahoma State. And only the top of the fifth inning. I mean, there's still eight more outs to go. No one really, I don't know if BYU has another pitcher to go warm up in the bullpen right now. Maybe a couple other freshmen that we haven't, you know, that have not really been in the rotation as of now. Another option they have is Ogbayani. Um, she throws a little bit. Looks like BYU does have someone out in the bullpen warming up. But Ogbayani, who plays shortstop for the Cougars, can also pitch. And maybe an arm they turn to, I believe they turned to her um, last week in Texas. And she came in and threw a couple innings. So the other arm that was warming up possibly in the bullpen was Alyssa Aguilar. for BYU. And so it looks like Chloe Temples is ready to go. CT38, repping on her face mask. BYU today in their royal blue tops. How many different uniform combos did you have when you played? That's a good question. <laughs> I'd say five. Ooh. But you could always, you know, mix and match, too. Nice. Chloe Temple's first pitch inside corner for strike number one. Two best uniform combos. I loved the all navy. Navy socks, navy pants, navy top, okay. and all whites. Ooh, nice. I think that's what BYU wore yesterday. You were yesterday they had the, the black and blues. Oh, okay, then on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> they wore it once this week. Off speed from Temples, misses. One ball and one strike to Scotland David. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. This one lifted high and out of play and goes off of our little roof and making its way on the little grassy knoll over here where the kids practice their slides. Free souvenir. <laughs> but a fan favorite always gets people in the mood, Sweet Caroline. Did you ever sing when you were playing when they played that song out in the field? Probably, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Especially when you're in the outfield, you know, in breaks like that. Little singing, little dancing. <laughs> Trying to keep yourself involved, moving. So the call stands. Sokolowski did not leave early. Here's the one, two. And this one lifted high in the air. Infield fly rule is called. And the catch is made by Komoku. So BYU gets two outs here in the top of the fifth. And that brings up Megan Bloodworth. I beg your pardon, Scotland David. No, I do beg your pardon. The scoreboard and has that wrong. It is, it is Bloodworth. And she is 0 for 2. And she flew out to left and grounded out to short. And so both of her hits, really, today, her bats on ball have been up to the left side. BYU playing that way. And she lifts this one promptly in the gap. Coming in to close the gap and make the catch is Lily Owens in right center. And BYU retires the Cowgirls in the top of the fifth. Let's see what BYU can vote the Hawaii 5 -0, just like her dad. Uh, just a cool, cool story, and what a cool family. So much aloha to the Agbayani Ohana, wherever you are. It's a good shot by Lana. It's a hard ground ball up the middle for a base hit. BYU showing some life here from Jalen Lambert. And even though there's, you know, three zeros on the board for BYU at the end of innings, 
they've hit the ball. They're doing a decent job. It's just not all strung together to score those runs. Every inning, they've gotten hits. So Agbayani at the dish. And she watches that one go by for ball number one from Rosenberry. And maybe this is the time where BYU kind of pulls things together offensively, but so far, I feel like the turning point was when Hunter Ava's line drive got caught by Rosenberry. And Agbayani showed bunt, bunted it foul. And at that moment, BYU had a couple runners in scoring position, one out. Hunter Ava with that line drive, and Rosenberry made the snag, which probably would have made it 3-2, to two, and that's a completely different ball game. Yep. Here's the 1-1. Agbayani slaps this one into left field for a base hit. Back-to-back -back hits for the Cougars. And Agbayani with her little celly over there at first. BYU once again with runners at first and second. Great hitting by Agbayani. The only time we've seen them capitalize on this situation so far this game is when Madrigal came up to bat. You know, laid down that sacrifice bunt and moved those runners to second third, second and third. Bejarana, we know, is a great sacrifice bunter. Is BYU going to push for that, or are they going to let her hit? She's also a great hitter, and BYU's chasing, you know, six runs. So it'll be interesting to see what um, approach Coach Eakin takes to this situation. Here's the 0-1. Bejarano slaps this one up the middle. Hard line drive. Eakin going to hold. Oh, no. Agbayani, excuse me. Lambert. Lambert, she blew through the sign. Did she? <laughs> I wasn't looking at what Coach Eakin was doing, but smart choice by her in that situation. Three hits in a row for BYU, and they get a run across. Lambert coming all the way around from second. And Bejarano doing well, keeping those hands back, throwing the knob at the ball. And Lambert on her horse, getting those white pants a little dirty. And the first pitching change, Owens up at the dish. And Owens first pitch swinging. Fouls him right into Oof. her foot. Hey, 75%, 75 and you got it. Come on kids, 75. You're hearing the, the crowd coaches through yeah. our speakers, 75%? Think that's her dad or? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Telling her not to go the full 100 with the swing. Another foul ball down the left side. Quickly, 0-2 the count to Lily Owens. And it'd be curious to know if Lily Owens even heard that. True. <laughs> being yelled, I know when I was up to bat, I didn't hear anything that uh. was being said by the crowd, but we could hear it loud and clear up here. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Kilfoyle. Low and outside for ball one. Good discipline from Owens not to chase. And we talked about this yesterday, how antsy sometimes you can feel when you have runners in scoring position and you might just be too anxious and swing at something that you normally wouldn't. Here's the one, two. Another foul ball. Hey, you're way ahead. Breathe. Take your time. Go, Lillard. 75%. 75%. Just meet it. So one and two the count to Lily Owens. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth. BYU already got one run in. And there's two more out there. Good take from Lily Owens. Off speed misses low for ball two. Kilfoyle has issued 11 walks in just 10 earned runs. A check swing from Owens. Gets the runners over, and that's almost as good as a bunt. So she is retired for the first out and puts those runners in scoring position. Agbayani to third, Bejarano to second. And that brings up the powerful Hunter Ava. Yeah, and with a base open, is Took Oklahoma State right out of my yeah, mouth. gonna throw to her? Or we may see the intentional walk. We know at least they're trying to throw around her slightly, not give her anything good. They know what she can do after yesterday. Ava aggressive with that first pitch. She was all over that and a little bit too far out in front.
Here's the L1 pitch. And Ava watches that one barely miss on the outside for ball one. Kilfoyle had a little extra long stare. And Carlos Guzman. Oh, great, great two screen here with the matchup. Ava. Got to straighten it out. Hey, now you gotta go up ball. The one and two of the count. You know, BYU won yesterday 11 to 8, and I believe Hunter had five RBIs, you know, in that game. She was a big part of the offense yesterday, and that's why they need her at this number four spot. Nava doing well. Keeping her composure, watches ball number two in the dirt. And it's interesting to see where the defense is playing. Everybody virtually almost on the grass. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. This one comes inside. Ava keeping Coach Eakin awake out there. So here, here's the thing for you, Taylor. If you're Kilfoyle and you're coming at Ava, and you're seeing that she's pulling everything. Do you try and set up outside with Carolyn Wong? I mean, yes, but Hunter Ava also can hit the outside pitch so well. That's the ball she, one of the balls she hit out yesterday. And Hunter Ava almost pops out. Caroline Wong lost it for a quick second, but she stays alive. Well, you have to figure anything it hits the outfield grass, you're probably going to get two runs to come across. And the outfield playing straight away. 2-2. Two -two. Ava, great discipline, watches ball three, narrowly miss. You have to have ice water in your veins to not swing at that. <laughs> yeah, such a good eye. And that's what makes her such a great player, too. She's so good at swinging at strikes. And Ava with the check swing flies out to Godwin at first. And BYU down another out. So one more out to go here in the bottom of the fifth. And one of the things that you've talked about, Taylor, is capitalizing, execution. You can't leave runners on base when you're trying to come back in a game. Yeah. It really makes the biggest difference in who wins and who loses in a ball game. Maddie Udall looking for her first hit on the afternoon and a comebacker right to Kilfoyle. And Kilfoyle comes in and does her job. BYU get better, right, Taylor? Oh, yeah. She's playing the best. If you want to be the best, you got to play the best and beat the best. And a lot of times you play to your level of competition, too, right? Beautiful bunt laid down. Throw is not in time. Taylor Anderson showing off that speed. And she's proving that she is going to be a force to be reckoned with throughout her career. This is... Yeah, a triple threat player. Yes. She can hit, <laughs> she has power, and she can bunt. And wheels, too. A great showcase for the freshman this weekend. And we're up here in the nice, cozy booth. It's about 55 degrees out there, a little bit drizzly. Again, shout out to our camera crew out there, braving the elements. And a nice strike there from Chloe Temples. Rosie Davis has been walked twice today and grounded out to short. Ooh, a little back pick action from Haley Morrow going down to Hunter Ava. Just keeping Taylor Anderson honest. We saw her get thrown out earlier today by Morrow. Maybe Morrow's just got like a vendetta. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you don't run on me and get yeah. away with it. She is not afraid to throw down to bases. And Anderson's going to get the best of her on that one. With the ball in the dirt. So now the defense will shift and play a little bit back. Try to keep the ball in front of them. Two balls, one strike to Rosie Davis. Yeah. 
Here's the 2-1. And Davis fouls this one off the net. Brings the count to 2-2. Two Temples, rocks, fires. Ball's in the dirt, Morrow comes up with it. Now the count is full. So if you want to see a good representation or demonstration of the, uh, the wristband action, you can see Chloe Temples. She gets it, she looks down, then she comes into her, her wind up. And she misses this one high. That's the third walk of the afternoon for Rosie Davis. I just feel like there's sometimes those players that the pitchers just can't throw them a strike that day. Yeah. Like it's kind of crazy how, you know, one single player can be walked by three different pitchers in one game. And that just is props to her too, that she has a really good eye and makes it makes the pitchers throw strikes. And Edwards watches Temple's pitch come through for strike one. Chloe Temple's coming to BYU via Stetson, the pride of Mariana High School in Mariana, Florida. Edwards lines this one into right field. Here comes the throw, not in time, cut off by Ava. And Anderson, again, showing off that speed, coming all the way around from second, makes it 8-2, to two, Oklahoma State. Edward, Edwards' bat has just been on fire today. I mean, I don't even know if she's got out today. Uh, she grounded into a fielder's choice in the third. But three hits besides that. Three hits besides yeah. that. And, like, manufacturing runs for Oklahoma State. She's just had a really good day. That brings up Carly Godwin as the wind continues to pick up its intensity. Godwin swings and misses. Temples blew that one right by her. And where's the 75% guy for Oklahoma State? Telling Carly Godwin to slow it down. Temples misses. And Edwards takes second base. And Edwards caught BYU sleeping a little bit. And we just got word from Oklahoma State SID Surge that today is, is uh, Edwards' career high in RBIs with five in a single game. So five out of the eight coming from Edwards today. And Temples misses low in the dirt for ball number two. Now you see the American flag blowing from left to right. Winds beginning to swirl. Rain forecasted within the next couple of minutes. Here's the 2-1. Off speed, misses high. Three balls and one strike. When you were in the infield, Taylor, and you had a pitcher that was in a situation like this, did you try to go out there to the mound at all, or did you just kind of let them do their thing? Yeah, kind of depended on the pitcher a little bit, right? You know, some did not want to be talked to. But, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of the times you definitely go out there and give them a word of encouragement. Godwin fouls this one back, brings the count full. The temples blows in her hands. It's a little chilly out there. Yeah. Gets her sign. Comes set, rocks, and fires. And Godwin lifts this one into center field, swirling around under it, making the catch as Lambert. Throw home is not in time. 
And throw down to second is in time. Edwards gets caught. And Edwards is out. So an awkwardly scored 8-2-6 double play. But a run does come across. Fields. So they overrule the call. And they're going to say that she's safe. So a successful challenge from Coach Kajewski. And not how BYU wanted it to go. Nope. Now only one out runner on second. Nine to two is the score. Caroline Wong at the plate. Temples fires in there for strike one. Wong lifts this one. Foul and on top of the Oklahoma State dugout. Wong hit the two-run home run in the first and flew out to right field in the third and grounded out to short in the fifth. And with Edwards at second base, Wong trying to cash her in. Here's the 0-2. Temple's missing outside. One ball and two strikes. You can hear the wind picking up on our microphones. You can yeah. see the long braided ponytail of Temples blowing with her jersey. And Temples missing high, two balls and two strikes. And the trees out in left and center field are just moving. Uh-huh. And there's another good shot from our camera crew. The BYU flag. The wind's coming in from the south side, blowing north. Nice off speed, good discipline from, from Wong. Yeah, that was a great pitch, especially with two strikes. Really good discipline. I'm surprised she, she didn't even motion to swing at all. Here's the payoff pitch. Two hopper, Agbayani bobbled it. Barely gets the runner at first. And I think we might have a challenge coming here. Man, umpire's really trying to help BYU out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Calling out. But so so smart for Oklahoma State's head coach to have them do a camera review and get the call right. So Wong is safe. And now runners at the corners with one out. And again, shout out to Timmy and Jason, our replay operators. And our direct. Take a chance on me. Always reminds me of Andy from The Office trying to woo Angela. Agbayani scoops this one up and fires over to Ava. But yet another run comes across. Sacrifice in the books, 10 to two. Oklahoma State tacks on another. The two are away for the Cougars here in the bottom of, or excuse me, top of the sixth. Looks like we will have a, a pinch hitter coming in. The Schneed Miller from Burleson, Texas, Audrey Schneed Miller, the redshirt sophomore. And she watches Temple's offering come through for strike number one, one ball and one strike.
Here's the 1-1 pitch from Temples. Misses on that outside corner. Two balls and a strike. And the tables have turned today. Oklahoma stay up 10 to 2 when BYU yesterday was up 10 to 2 at one point during the game. Yep. Here's the 2 1. This ball lifted in the air, swirling around with that wind, but coming under it and making the catch is Jalen Lambert. So in the top of the sixth, Oklahoma State gets three more. There, Kayla Kamoku. And Kamoku watches Kilfoyle's pitch come inside for ball number one. Oklahoma State on top, 10 to two. Oklahoma State has scored in every inning but two so far. Kamoku swings and misses. Oklahoma State got three in the first, one in the third, three in the fourth, and then three in the sixth. UAU got one in the second, and then one in the fifth. And Kamoku watches that one in the dirt, two balls and a strike. And 10 hits on the afternoon so far for those Cowgirls. And BYU with just four. And look at those numbers left on base. BYU had six runners left on base. And Oklahoma State with five. I mean, that could be five more runs for them. Absol and they already are at 10. Yeah. They've really hit the ball well today. So two balls and two strikes to Kamoku. And Kilfoyle misses low and inside. Three balls and two strikes. Here's the payoff pitch, and Kamoku gets jammed. That's going to sting. And a slow dribbler, Davis to Godwin for the out. And you don't miss those, do you? No. Especially when it's cold oh, outside. Brutal. So Haley Morrow now at the dish. And Haley Morrow from Las Vegas, Nevada, from Shadow Ridge High School. And got to love that she comes out to Elvis in Viva Las Vegas. She's not one of those fans that jumped on the bandwagon with Austin Butler. She's born there. She's battle born in Las Vegas. And Kilfoyle dials a strike in there. One ball and one strike. Here's the 1-1. And Kilfoyle hits the outside corner. One ball and two strikes to the catcher. And Haley Morrow not having her favorite series so far offensively. Just one for seven at the plate. And Kilfoyle bounces that one up for two balls and two strikes. But another crazy thing is about softball is that you talked about this earlier, Taylor, is that here she is one for seven, but she, if she gets three hits, then she'll be at, you know, 300. Yeah. And it's just you can fail six, seven times and still be the top of the class. And that's what's the hardest part about this game and, you know, hitting. It's just it's kind of brutal mentally. You really have to be mentally tough and focus on, you know, the three, four good hits than the six, seven bad ones. And that can be really hard to do. Here's the payoff pitch. And down goes Morrow swinging. At Kilfoyle when she's getting ahead, really coming hard and in on these BYU hitters this inning. And that's just a wicked that's pitch. That's a mean drop ball. Oh, that is so much movement. So quickly, BYU down to their final out in the inning. And 
And Kilfoyle missing inside to Lindsay Madrigal. Lindsay Madrigal coming to BYU via Salt Lake Community College. And Kilfoyle hits that outside spot. One ball, one strike. Now Kilfoyle seems to be finding her groove and really hitting all of her spots. One ball and two strikes. Here's the one, two. Line drive foul. One ball, two strikes. <laughs> Little race between catcher and pitcher trying to pick up that foul ball. Godwin and Wong. The things you do when you have an eight run lead, trying to keep yourself invested in the game. There's a good shot. Madrigal on the right, Kilfoyle on the left. Kilfoyle misses in the dirt. Now, question for you, Taylor. If you're if you're listening, you can hear a slap before the ball comes. And Kilfoyle, when she comes around in her windup, she's slapping her glove against her leg. Is that something that could be distracting to the batter? I don't really think so. Not that I remember. At least when I was playing, everyone's different too. I think. What's distracting that girls do when they throw is if their windup is really fast or like excessively slow. Uh, you know, that's a little weird. Um, or just if their body like gets really wide, you don't see that very much either. But I never really noticed a glove slap when I played. And the payoff pitch is high for ball four. So Lindsay Madrigal draws a two out walk in the bottom of the six for BYU. And hoping to keep the Cougars active here. And Jalen Lambert taking us a little south of the border with her walk-up song. And BYU brought in pinch runner Lexi Bennett going in for Lindsay Madrigal. First pitch, swinging, great defensive stop from Godwin and puts an end to BYU's offense in the sixth.